In today's True Crime and Tutorial Tuesday video, I'm talking about Peter Sullivan whilst doing my makeup. So keep on watching to hear about his crimes and to see me create this makeup look. Today's case takes place in 1986 in Birkenhead city centre in the UK. Peter Sullivan was an unemployed labourer who had been in and out of prison since he was aged 18 and at the time this case takes place he was 29 years old. He had accumulated 18 convictions for minor offences such as petty theft and stealing cars and had served time in jail. But there was nothing in his record that indicated that he was capable of horrific violence. Diane Sindel, aged 21, was a florist who also had a part-time job as a barmaid in the local pub, the Wellington Hotel, in Bevington. On Friday the 1st of August, 1986, at half eleven, Diane's florist van had run out of petrol while she was driving home from her shift in the pub, so she had walked back along the main road in the direction of the 24-hour garage. She had never made it there. Incredibly, even though the horrific incident had occurred right next to one of the busiest roads in the town, no one had witnessed it. Her head had been smashed in repeatedly with a two-foot crowbar. She was naked from the waist down and had been sexually attacked. She was found in an alleyway close to her home in Crescenton Avenue, Tranmere. The following day, though, dog walkers disturbed a man burning clothes on Bidston Hill, a local nature spot. He ran away, but the walkers managed to get a good enough look to later identify him. They put the fire out to preserve what was left, and the clothes were later confirmed as those of Diane's. The incident was on Crime Watch just seven weeks later, and was the regional police department's biggest murder investigation to date at the time. Such was the urgency to get this man off the streets. Peter was eventually caught, as these were the days before DNA profiling, it was the teeth marks that did it. Identified by his dental records, he was nailed by the bite marks on Diane's body, along with the testimony of the witnesses when he was burning her clothes. That was what saw him in jail. Dr Geoffrey Garrett, the home office pathologist who carried out the post-mortem on Diane's body, and later featured the case in his memoir, The Course of Death, said the severity of the injuries left little doubt that Diane would have died very quickly once the blows rained down, but she was then dragged backward and stripped almost naked. This takes at least a couple of minutes with an unhelpful body and that is a long time in a street murder. When Peter Sullivan was first arrested, he denied murdering her, but six weeks later, a couple that saw a reconstruction of the murder on the television remembered seeing him burning clothes at a local beauty spot two days after the murder. The clothes were Peter Sullivan and Diane symbols. When he was questioned again, he confessed. Peter denied the charge of murder at Liverpool Crown Court, but was unanimously found guilty by a jury in November 1987 after Merseyside's longest murder trial for 40 years. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, and although even killers of his cemetery are usually given a minimum tariff they have to serve before being considered for release, he remains in prison to this day where he belongs. The Ministry of Justice confirmed Peter Sullivan, formerly of Queensbury Gardens, Birkenhead, was still serving a sentence of life imprisonment and there was currently no prospect of him being released. Peter's former home in Queensbury Gardens has long since been demolished and indeed the address no longer exists. Today, a simple memorial to Diane Sindel by the side of busy Borough Road is the only reminder of the shocking case. These are the words of the poignant message on Diane's memorial stone at the site she lost her life. Diane Sindel, murdered, 1986 because she was a woman. In memory of all our sisters who have been raped and murdered, we will never let it be forgotten. The brutal murder of Diane led directly to the setting up of the RASA, Rape and Sexual Abuse Support, Merseyside, which now has grown into a highly professional and experienced organisation offering care to victims of sexual violence across Merseyside and beyond. So at least there has been some good to come out of this horrific murder. And I do think as you get older, you do realise that you just cannot tell by looks who are the bad men and who are the good men. You know, it could be anybody out there. You've always, as a woman, kind of got to be on guard which is a shame that we have to be and sort of sort of have that vigilance and that unease in, you know, today's society, really. It could be your neighbour, your colleague, 
maybe even someone you consider a friend that lovely man that chats to you when he sees you out you know who knows what he gets up to when it gets dark you know, you have to question ulterior motives and watch your back still when even someone you consider a friend or think you know you should feel safe around you can't always and it is really sad and really heartbreaking to hear cases like this we do have to be vigilant and we do need to remember and honor the victims of senseless murder and you know just it shouldn't be our duty to watch our backs but unfortunately there's some sick evil twisted people out there so yeah it's definitely something to be mindful about luckily now that we have you know technology like mobile phones and stuff like that trackers you know it's a little bit easier to keep safe but it's a shame that yeah in this day and age we still have to be as wary as we do so guys that is everything i do have for this case everything for today's video i hope you guys have all enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next one